people without without even doing a gut microbiome test, people are uh, left and right, they're intervening. Uh, there is no evidence, right? Uh, so for an ideal dietary intervention, uh, there has to be evidence backed. So we always talk about evidence-based medicine, especially when you want to offer a personalized medicine. When I recommend something, whether I say go for a keto diet or a caveman diet or intermittent fasting, whatever it is, on what basis am I making that? Does it fit everybody, right? If you talk to people and say, oh, keto doesn't work for me. I have tried fasting. It doesn't work for me, right? So there's no one size fits all approach. So if you want to personalize uh, weight loss therapies, uh, uh, some kind of intervention for weight loss or a, or a wellness, nutrition and wellness, the only way you can personalize this is by doing a gut microbiome test. And then you can evaluate them based on this kind of clinical correlations. Then you can personalize that. Especially in obesity, uh, dysbiosis is very commonly associated with, especially also in the senior citizens, 50 and above. Uh, and uh, it's characterized by the very high levels of the bacteria lineages in that particular population. But we suspect it could be private in, in the Asian population. And among the BAC1 and BAC2, BAC2 phenotype is highly likely uh, disease associated. And uh, here they have looked at the influence of the live microorganism supplement. They did see some improvement, but then it's not a huge, uh, huge improvement. Uh, maybe the time duration was very small, small and uh, they only have around 100, 100 to 200 volunteers. Uh, so 10% weight loss is what they have documented uh, with the supplements. Uh, but definitely there was some improvement in the, in the dysbiosis with the supplements. But again, the question here is, are these the right kind of supplements, right? So are we fixing this back to one, back to uh, ratio? Uh, so that's the supplement actually address that. That's that's some something they, they discussed in the discussion section. They said, maybe the supplement is not the right one, right? So, so it's not only enough to personalize the diagnostic test, we also need to personalize the supplements. So that means, uh, depending on the intro types, this is what we are proposing. Uh, we don't think it's just three types or four types. We think that could be at least uh, uh, 21 different intro types, <laughs> right? It's, it, can, it can get more and more complex, but we, we from based on whatever data we are seeing, uh, globally, people fall under major these three or four groups, but then when you look at all the subtypes under each groups, under Rubinococcus, Bacteroides, Prevotella, Burkholderia, like that, uh, 21 different major uh, second level, second tier intro types are emerging. Then, then there are like, 64,000 minors so that comes in the in the algorithm. So we, nobody has the patience to look at 64,000. So forget about that. At least 21 this 21 major intro types we can look at, and then we can have 21 different capsules, right? So let's say you are falling into intro type one, three, and seven. I'll give you the capsules one, three, and seven, right? So I'll have the what is the missing in your gut microbiome. I will try to replenish that. So that is something that we are working on. Uh, so in this particular study, they have looked at the, the diversity uh, is very important. So they mainly look at the diversity, but a lot of things you can look at. And uh, they have looked at this interesting uh, Ackermansia mucinipilia. So that's very interesting because this is a very important uh, bacteria which creates that mucinous layer in the, in the intestinal colon epithelium which is protecting the epithelium from all these dangerous infections. For example, you must have read in COVID, uh, not only the, the respiratory infection, you also have the gut infection. Uh, that's why we have uh, coronavirus circulating in the wastewater. And there have been many studies with nanopore wastewater surveillance, right? Uh, from communities, uh, high prevalence communities, wherever the COVID virus, we can find it in the water because of the gut infections, just like polio virus. Uh, recently, I was surprised in UK, there was a study, they actually found polio virus uh, polio virus is still circulating, even though there's no cases, but polio virus is still found in the way. When they were looking for coronavirus, they found polio virus. It's still there, you know? So we, we think polio is eradicated, but then it always comes back. Then we have monkeypox, and then now even cows, uh, a lot of cows are being infected with lumpy skin disease. That's again, belongs to some kind of uh, virus. Uh, so the beneficial bacteria like Ackermansia, uh, also, some other uh, some of, some other good bacteria, uh, so the U bacterium, right, and, the, and a couple of other things. Uh, so either it is uh, an increase of abnormal bad bacteria, or it is a loss of the good bacteria, right? So so it's an imbalance. Uh, 